What's good, Josh Boy Ross? Back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out Bray Wyatt's first and last matches in WWE Bell to Bell series by Tap Out Corner. Unfortunately, this is uh something uh that uh wasn't looking forward to seeing this video this soon. You know, usually when you see the Bell to Bell series, is you know. I, I, I guess a collection of someone's career and it just sucks that unfortunately his career was cut short due to unfortunate uh medical you know health reasons and it's you know it's one of those things where you know I at some point felt like Bray Wyatt would get the proper run that he deserves in the company and was hoping that that was going to be the case in the future at some point uh and he had some decent runs and decent moments but i just feel like wwe uh definitely dropped the ball on like carrying his momentum when he would find a way to you know get that momentum they really didn't capitalize on it as well as they should have each and every time he was able to uh you know overcome the bad or questionable creative decisions so it, it is bittersweet as we get to watch you know and go through and check out uh his career you know as a whole but at the same time i just i i, I feel like it was just it was cut too short you know what i'm saying but once again it's out of our hands you know this was just one of those unfortunate situations and i really wish we could have seen more of his career but that's just how life is and all you can do is make the best of you know of what what we have and we can still remember him and cherish him for the career we were able to see so we're gonna get right into this one man appreciate all love and support this is a bittersweet video let's check this out man it isn't too surprising that bray wyatt became a wwe wrestler both his father and grandfather wrestled for the company so wrestling was already in wyatt's blood mm -hmm. despite that bray wyatt wasn't planning on becoming a wrestler instead attending college on a football scholarship wow However, in the middle of his education bray decided to drop out and change careers by following in the footsteps of his father and entering the world of wrestling Bray Wyatt didn't go into it alone, as he was joined by his younger brother, Bo Dallas. Mm -hmm. He started their training at WWE's development system, FCW, in 2008. Wyatt had his first ever wrestling match in early 2009, and a performer under the name Duke Rotundo. Rotundo wow. being a reference to Bray Wyatt's real name, Wyndham Rotunda. He spent over a year in development before getting his shot in WWE. On season two of NXT, Wyatt was one of eight rookies competing to become the next, quote, breakout star. Mm -hmm. Bray was renamed Husky Harris and paired with Cody Rhodes. The same night he debuted on the main roster, the future Bray Wyatt had his first WWE match. Wyatt teams with his mentor, Cody Rhodes. Bro, imagine if they would have been able to do like a Bray Wyatt Cody Rhodes interaction. You know, that would have been cool because the history they have in a match against MVP and his rookie, Showtime Percy Watson. Cody started as a legal man, and after wearing down Percy, Rose tagged in his rookie. Bray hit a handful of big moves on Showtime, including a splash into the corner, but soon tagged back out. Cody Rhodes continued to dish out punishment to MVP's rookie, but eventually got Bray Wyatt back into the match. Bray hit a massive senton, but missed an elbow drop, allowing Percy Watson to tag in MVP. Montel Vontavious Porter picked up the pace of the match and started laying into Bray Wyatt. Cody Rhodes tried to help his rookie, but had no luck. Showtime tagged back in, hit a finishing move, and got the pinfall victory over wow. Bray Wyatt. The match was fine. While Bray wasn't actually Bray Wyatt yet, some of the moves he used as Husky Harris were the same that he would use as the Eater of Worlds. On that topic, how do you go from Husky to Bray? After several weeks on NXT, the third generation wrestler was eventually eliminated from the competition. Wyatt would still be seen on the main roster though. At Hell in a Cell 2010, he attacked John Cena during a match and soon joined the Nexus. The future face of fear stayed with the group for several mm -hmm. months and remained a Nexus member even after CM Punk took over the faction. Wyatt's first run on the main roster came to an abrupt end though, when Punk started feuding with Randy Orton. Bray, Husky Harris Wyatt, as well as the other Nexus members, would aid CM Punk which ended up getting Wyatt a punch kick to the head. This yeah, was used to break I remember that when, uh, what's the name, Randy was taking out the Nexus members one by one, kicking them into the gulags, man. Bray off TV so he could be sent back to development to train further. During this time, Bray Wyatt dropped the Husky Harris character and developed a new, darker persona. Mm -hmm. This new character became known as Bray Wyatt, a creepy cult leader. And some would say this is his best character, like form of character work. Some would say the Bray Wyatt gimmick, the the uh, the when they created the Wyatt family, ultimately the rocking chair, all of that, the way he was talking. Some would say this is his, you know, that's their favorite version of Bray Wyatt, you know. 
Warrior and debuted in FCW in 2012. Shortly after Bray's debut, FCW had come to an end and NXT became WWE's new development system. Bray Wyatt moved over to this new brand and promo videos started airing on the show. Mm -hmm. These gave fans insight into who Wyatt was and ultimately built Bray Wyatt's first official match as Bray Wyatt. Before the ring announcer could introduce him, Bray Wyatt already had a mic in his hand. He described himself to fans as the angel in the dark and that they'd be finding out more about him soon. Wyatt's debut match was against future VOD villain Aiden English, wow. who was NXT's resident enhancement guy at the time. Bray's first move was to kick English in the gut and wear him down. The action went to the floor, where the cult leader continued to dish out punishment and smiled as he did it. Bray displayed his strength by getting English back into the ring and lifting the 215 pound man over his shoulder. Wyatt then sent his entire body crashing into Aiden English and his sister Abigail to close out his debut match. The yeah, entire contest was just wild, under two minutes, man. so not a whole lot to this one. The main purpose, though, was to give an official. Just seeing his mannerisms in the ring, and he was he's invested in the character. Like all of that plays into part into having a a, a character that the fans can be intrigued by because he's he's beating this guy up, but he's smiling and he, then he gets serious. You don't know what's gonna happen, and I like that. Dr. Bray Wyatt and give a live showcase of the Look Wyatt at character. That. Fans seemed to like the character almost instantly too, as they chanted Wyatt during the match. This was truly only the beginning, because following his debut, Bray would go on to form the Wyatt family. Mm -hmm. He introduced two followers he called sons, Luke Harper and Eric Rest Rowan. In peace, Bray man. Wyatt Luke guided Harper. Harper and Rowan to victory when they became NXT Tag Team Champions. Around the same time, creepy videos would be shown on Raw, warning the main roster of the Wyatt uh -huh. family's arrival. Their first target was Kane, with the trio attacking the Big Red Machine on Raw. This set up the Bray Wyatt character's first match and on the- I believe that's when they start chanting, Husky Harris, the crowd. <laughs> main roster. Considering both Bray and Kane were two of the most supernatural characters in WWE, it only made sense they fought in an Inferno, I mean, Arena Fire match. With help from Luke <laughs> Harper and Eric Rowan, Bray got a huge win by defeating the Devil's Favorite Demon. Wyatt continued to destroy the WWE roster, picking mm -hmm. up wins over mainly smaller names. The Wyatt family then moved on to a rivalry with CM Punk and Daniel Bryan, which began after Luke Harper lost a match to Punk. Despite the Wyatt's dominance, the best in the world and the GOAT outwrestled the family on multiple occasions. Things changed though when Bray and his followers singled out Brian. After multiple beatdowns, this was so Daniel good, Bryan bro. gave in and became the fourth. This was good. This was good, but it was it was concerning because it was like it was WWE trying to, you know, kind of steer the crowd into another direction, which actually worked. It, which actually worked, you know what I'm saying? They they steered Daniel Bryan into this feud with Bray, and it ultimately got Daniel Bryan even more over, because at one point, he was supposed to be a heel since he joined them, but we knew Daniel Bryan wasn't really a heel. It was all a ploy or whatnot, but it still worked because it got Daniel Bryan even more over for the fans to want to see him in the main event scene member of the Wyatt family. It turned out to be a bad acquisition though, because not only did the Wyatt family stop winning after Brian joined, but when Bray went to punish him, Daniel turned on him and mm -hmm. left the group. The Eater of Worlds got his revenge at the 2014 Royal Rumble by beating Daniel Bryan. One of the Oof, one of the best matches. <laughs> one of the best matches on Royal in Royal Rumble history. One of them for sure. And one of the best matches of that year. I were oh such a good match. Although their paths would cross again years later. Later that same night, Wyatt Harper and Rowan attacked another major star, John Cena. Bray later explained that he wanted to show that Cena's heroic characteristics were fake and his intentions were to change. I oh, wish they would have gave him the win at WrestleMania. The lead up to this was actually good. I liked the story he was trying to tell. Like, John, you're not really like that, bro. Embrace the hate. Ah, oh, I love this. The face of WWE into a monster. At WrestleMania 30, Bray and Cena went one-on-one, -on -one, and despite interference from the Wyatt family, John Cena stood triumphant and I became wish the first he person lost. to pin the new face of fear. Bray that was a bad. That was a bad decision. He should have lost. Even if Bray cheated, he should have lost. Lost a month later at Extreme Rules, but it didn't really matter since he and Cena faced off in a third match where the 16-time world champion literally buried Wyatt under a pile of equipment cases. After that rivalry, Bray feuded with another WWE veteran, Chris Jericho. This one went a bit better, with Jericho only defeating Bray Wyatt once and Wyatt beating Y2J twice, mm -hmm. one of which was at SummerSlam. After this, the Wyatt family broke up after Bray set Luke Harper and Eric Rowan free. This meant for the first time in his WWE career, Bray Wyatt was a singles competitor. Mm -hmm. His first 
solo rivalry started at Hell in a Cell 2014. Bray interfered in a match between Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins, yep. causing Ambrose to lose. This began a feud that continued yeah. through the rest of 2014 and ended in early 2015. Out of the five matches Dean and Bray had, Wyatt won four of them, which was a nice comeback after his two previous rivalries with Cena and Jericho. Yeah, which is after cr crazy to say. After lunatic fringe, Bray Wyatt went after another legend, The Undertaker. At Fastlane, Bray officially challenged the dead man to a match at WrestleMania, which Taker accepted. Like the previous year, though, Wyatt fell victim to the Tombstone Piledriver and left the grand stage of the mall in defeat. The next major rivalry for the Eater of Worlds was against Roman Reigns. Wyatt would cost Reigns the Money in the Bank mm -hmm. contract to set up a match at Battleground. Thanks to the interference from Luke Harper, Bray Wyatt defeated the Big Dog and reformed the Wyatt family. Eric Rowan eventually came back too, as well as a new member, Braun Strowman. Mm -hmm. The revived Wyatt family picked up some wins, such as at TLC over the ECW Legends, but also had their fair share of losses, like against the Brothers of Destruction at Survivor Series, Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns at SummerSlam, or against The Rock and John Cena at WrestleMania 32. In 2016, I forgot that was a Bray's thing. career hit a bit of a roadblock. Yeah, I definitely forgot he uh, he did have that match, uh, um, that impromptu match with The Rock, I want to say. I think that's what it was. Ever series, Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns at SummerSlam, or against The Rock and John Cena at WrestleMania 32. In 2016, Bray's career hit a bit of a roadblock when he suffered an injury while WWE was touring Europe. He wasn't mm -hmm. gone for long though, and once he returned, the Wyatts had a feud with the WWE Tag Team Champions, The New Day. The family beat the champs at Battleground, however, the tag titles were not on the line. Shortly after the big win, the group was split up, with Strowman going to Raw while Bray and Harper went to SmackDown. The split ended up being a great move for Bray Wyatt's career. He began a feud with Randy Orton when yep. Wyatt called Orton damage. They were set to face off at Backlash, but Wyatt attacked the Viper before their match started, allowing Bray to win by forfeit. The two men with Y's at the end of their names went at it once more at No Mercy, where Wyatt won again thanks to help from Luke Harper. Yep. Despite their rivalry, Randy Orton surprised everyone by joining Wyatt and Harper. Yeah, that was a that was a that was a a, a a little dope surprise. I did not see that coming, and I, I'm not gonna lie to you, I did enjoy their interaction. I just wasn't a big fan of how it it ultimately ended with. Randy Orton beating him at WrestleMania, I just did not like that. And that lead up wasn't as it should have been better in my opinion. Everything else they did was actually quite enjoyable. It's just that WrestleMania match was not it. Third incarnation of the Wyatt family. They went after the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, Rhino and Heath Slater, defeating them at TLC. The group utilized the Freebird rule, making the SmackDown Tag Team Championship the first title Bray Wyatt won in WWE. The celebration That's was short-lived, however. Just a few weeks later, the Wyatt family lost the titles in a match where Luke Harper and Randy Orton were defending them. Tempers began to flare because of the loss, leading to a match between Orton and Harper. Randy won that match, causing Bray to attack Harper afterward and exile him from the group. Not long after winning his first championship, Bray Wyatt won another. At the 2017 Elimination Chamber, mm -hmm. Bray outlasted five other men to win the WWE title. A massive accomplishment for Facts. a guy who used to be called Husky Harris. Yeah, nah. And, and the crazy thing is, I didn't even realize the SmackDown Tag Team Championships, that was his first championship that he won. I didn't even realize that. Didn't even realize that. And then he goes from that to SmackDown Tag Team Championship to the WWE Championship. That's a big jump. Granted, he he had the crazy thing is he's he was fighting in a lot of high profile feuds that didn't have championships involved, which is actually quite crazy and was still able to be, become the WWE Championship at in the uh in the end, so Randy Orton had won the Royal Rumble about a month earlier, but agreed not to challenge Bray. With his full trust, Wyatt gave Orton access to the Wyatt family compound. It turned out the whole thing had been a trick, and the Viper yep. burned down the compound and challenged Bray to a match at WrestleMania. Yep. Things only got worse as Bray Wyatt fell victim to the RKO and lost his third WrestleMania match as well as the WWE Championship. Bray would defeat Orton in their rematch at Payback, but yeah. like with Battleground 2016, the match was non-title. And it's one of those type of things where it, I, I, I get what they were trying to go. It, it, the idea was cool. It just, in execution, it didn't really work. And once again, it's just like, why not just give him the win off the jump with some of these guys? That's my only thing. That is my only thing. I would have loved for Bray Wyatt to have retain the title at WrestleMania. I don't know. Wyatt didn't win back the WWE Championship. 
Around this time, Bray Wyatt was moved to Raw. He had a few minor feuds, but things really got good when he started a rivalry with Matt Hardy. After defeating uh -huh. Hardy in a match, Matt reverted to his broken persona, or Woken as he's now being called. Uh -huh. They played mind games with each other and continued having matches, with both wrestlers trading wins and losses. The rivalry built to the Ultimate Deletion match, where the Woken one defeated the Eater of Worlds. Afterward, Matt took the battle a step further and threw Bray into the lake of reincarnation. Wyatt wasn't seen again until WrestleMania 34 mm -hmm. when he helped his former enemy win the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy were now working together and, soon after, they won the Raw Tag Team Championship. Unfortunately, in their first title defense, they lost the belts to Curtis Axel and Bray's brother, Bo Dallas. Afterward, <laughs> Matt Hardy took time off to heal his injuries, and Bray Wyatt would also disappear from WWE. In April 2019, weird videos of disturbing puppets began playing on Raw and SmackDown. Bray Wyatt returned later, appearing in some kind of children's TV show mm -hmm. called the Firefly Funhouse. He would interact with the previously mentioned puppets, which were- And this was, this was actually pretty entertaining, bro. When he went away, came back, and these vignettes it was like it was like the it's just a creepy version of the you know uh mr rogers neighborhood you know if you grew up watching that show which i did or whatnot it was that was what it was just mr rogers but creepier and it was intriguing because you're like yo what's going on where is this going to like this was this is very, this just shows how creative he was, man. References to different parts of Wyatt's career, like Huskus the Pig Boy, who represented Husky Harris. Mm -hmm. The Firefly Funhouse would slowly become darker, with Bray symbolically destroying his old self. This led to Wyatt introducing a new mass persona called The Fiend. Eventually, Bray Wyatt as The Fiend would leave the Firefly Funhouse and begin attacking the WWE roster. Mm -hmm. The first victim was Finn Balor, whom Wyatt defeated quickly at SummerSlam. The Fiend continued attacking people and began using the mandible claw to incapacitate them. After putting everyone on notice, The Fiend set his sights on the Universal Champion, Seth Rollins. And Finn this is where they messed up. They should have did it more or less like they did his first run as Bray Wyatt with the Wyatt family, going after people, taking them out. He should not have been forced into a situation to take out the champion because people at that point wanted him to win. It was a lose-lose, especially if you have them in that hell in the cell. It was a lose-lose, bro. You had to have him win. And if you weren't going to have him win, then don't put him in that match. I would have rather him take out everybody else on the roster for a little bit before we got to that because you couldn't have him lose. Fitting with Wyatt's new character, Seth and the Fiend went to war inside Hell in a Cell. Seth hit a ridiculous amount of curb stomps, ridiculous and the fight amount. ultimately ended by referee stoppage. Wyatt and Seth went at it again at Crown Jewel, and this time, the Fiend beat Rollins and became the new Universal Champion. Following the victory, Bray had two different versions of the Universal Championship that he would use. The mm -hmm. first was the normal belt that his Firefly Funhouse character would have. The other was a creepy black mm -hmm. and red leather belt with his face in the middle. The Fiend's first challenger was actually an old rival, Daniel yep. Bryan. Like Bray Wyatt did in 2014, The Fiend defeated Daniel once at the 2019 Survivor Series and again at, ironically, the 2020 Royal yep. Rumble. The Fiend's telegram was going well, only for it to end at Super Showdown, or returning Goldberg to feed The Fiend in three Still just, uh, just, just, just fucking stupid. <laughs> this just was dumb. This, this will always, for me, be one of the low points of his career. Not because of him, because of the booking, because someone thought, you know what, an aging Goldberg beating a current talent that the fans are finally getting a chance to see actually run with a championship gets beaten in like three minutes by an aging veteran. All right, man minutes and became the new universal champion how many Shortly minutes i think he said i think he said like three yeah. the fiend in three minutes and became right. the new universal champion <sighs> shortly after becoming championshipless again the fiend confronted another old rival john Cena, which was entertaining this was entertaining of course cena accepted and the two competed in a firefly funhouse match the match if you want to call it that yeah went through their history and played out moments in a surreal way in the end the fiend won avenging bray wyatt's defeat against cena six years earlier which was Hot great his wrestlemania victory bray wyatt set his sights on another individual from his past braun Strowman, who is now the universal champion over the summer of 2020 mm -hmm. Wyatt played a number of disturbing mind games causing Strowman to change and bring out the monster inside him after a few matches, they went one-on-one -on -one at SummerSlam, uh -huh. where the Fiend successfully defeated Braun to become a two-time Universal Champion. 
However, if you haven't learned, Bray Wyatt's championship reigns never lasted long. Nope. Immediately after winning the title, yep. the Roman Reigns attacked both <laughs> Keith and Braun Strowman. And this set up a triple threat match at Payback one week later, where Roman Reigns won the Universal title after pinning Strowman. Mm -hmm. The Fiend didn't try to regain his championship. Instead, he went back to Raw and bumped into another rival from Bray's path. Yep, Randy, Randy Orton. <laughs> he, was, he was just hitting the greatest hits. <laughs> Randy Orton. Over the course of several weeks, The Fiend would stalk and attack the Viper. This ultimately led to them facing off at TLC 2020 in a Firefly Inferno match. Since he burnt Bray's compound, the uh -huh. only way to top that was to burn Wyatt himself, which is exactly what Orton did. Yeah, it was kind of hokey. <laughs> For the next few months, Bray Wyatt wouldn't be seen, although his presence was still felt. This is thanks to his newest follower, yep. Alexa Bliss, yep. who aligned herself with The Fiend prior to the rivalry with Orton. Bliss would keep Wyatt's presence alive by harassing and attacking Randy Orton. This led to an intergender match at the 2021 Fastlane between The Viper <laughs> and Bliss. During the fight, The Fiend returned by rising from the rain and attacking Randy Orton, allowing Bliss to pin him. After a move <laughs> like that, it was only fitting that Orton and The Fiend would have a rematch. The two agreed to face each other at WrestleMania 37. And once again, it didn't make sense because they still messed it up i don't know how you messed it up uh and i think this is the you know when fans were actually able to be in the ring like at the arena why they just didn't give him the win we will never know seven four years after their last wrestlemania encounter even though he came into the match as the fiend and not bray wyatt he couldn't get the job done while bray was strong and put up a good fight a distraction by alexa bliss allowed the apex predator to capitalize and shut the fiend down in the next night on raw alexa bliss explained she no longer needed the fiend and left him wyatt would respond by saying he was looking forward to a fresh start which didn't exactly happen for several months neither bray wyatt nor the fiend would be seen uh -huh. then in july 2021 it was enough that wyatt had been released from yep. WWE. It was shocking and disappointing, but the story didn't end there. A little over a year after Bray Wyatt's release, rumors of his return started circulating. In September 2021, WWE began playing an acapella version of the song White Rabbit by Jefferson Airplane during commercial breaks and at uh, untelevised events. QR codes would appear on WWE TV yeah. that led to web pages that all seemed to reference Bray and The Fiend. And I'm not going to lie to you, this was very creative. I'm like, bro, once again, they're getting in the creative bag. This was so dope. Just the little puzzles and the teases. So good. Finally, at Extreme Rules 2022, Wyatt would officially return, along with live-action versions of the characters from the Firefly Funhouse. Six days later, on SmackDown, Bray Wyatt officially addressed the fans, but was cut short by a mysterious masked individual. This would happen again two weeks later, with the masked man calling himself Uncle Howdy. At the same time, Bray would literally butt heads with Ellen mm -hmm. Knight and began a rivalry with him. The two continued to confront and attack each other over the next several weeks. During one encounter, Uncle Howdy appeared in person and scared off Ellie Knight. Soon after, Ellie Knight would challenge Bray Wyatt to a match at the Royal Rumble. Bray accepted, and at the same moment, Uncle Howdy once again joined the two. This time, however, Howdy attacked Bray Wyatt to the shock of everyone. The last big moment before Wyatt and Knight's match happened during the 30th anniversary yep. of Raw. Ellie Knight was talking trash about the WWE legends who were backstage, which got the attention of The Undertaker. Knight didn't want any piece of the dead man, but Bray Wyatt wasn't going to let his Royal Rumble opponent get off that easily. Taker and Bray laid out LA Knight and yep. seemed to be a passing of the torch. torch yeah. After getting the dead man's seal of approval, it was time for Bray Wyatt to compete in what sadly turned out to be his final match. Oh, man. At the 2023 Royal Rumble, Bray Wyatt and LA Knight faced off in a pitch black match. In addition to the ring and arena being drenched in black light and neon colors, the match was anything goes, and the only way to win was by pinfall or submission. I mean, the idea of it was cool i guess like the the visual but at the same time i think it took away from the match i think they could have i mean i get it wwe was getting paid uh, some money for this but i i rather them have used the mountain dew gimmick for something else man that's my only thing like i just felt like this match the the visuals look pretty cool but the match itself after all those months of build up it didn't really hit like fans wanted it to. Once the bell rang, Bray instantly took Ellie Knight down and started dishing out punishment. Wyatt then threw Ellie Knight over his shoulder and then over his head. 
The fight soon went outside of the ring, where Ellie Knight turned things around by throwing Bray Wyatt into the ring steps. Before Knight could do anything, Wyatt threw LA over the barricade. Wyatt tried to suplex his opponent onto the announcer's table, but LA Knight countered and drove Bray through the table instead. LA Knight tried to build off the momentum, but got shoved out of the ring. Knight fought back with a glowing kendo stick, only for Bray to shut it down with Sister Abigail and end the match. The fight wasn't over though. After the bell rang, Bray Wyatt suddenly had a mask on and started stalking his opponent. LA Knight ran away and tried to fight off Bray, yeah. but it had no effect. Bray subdued LA Knight, and suddenly, Uncle Howdy appeared and hit Knight with an elbow drop from the top of a platform. The match and the entire segment were fun. Sure, the pitch black match was technically a promotional tie-in, but they honestly made it work, and it actually lent itself perfectly to Bray Wyatt. Why Me personally, I just wasn't a big fan of it. I like the visual. It looks cool. It looked creepy. I just think it kind of distracted in the match. I think I would have preferred him just had a regular match and then had him go fucking crazy. You know what I'm saying? I would have preferred that, in my personal opinion. But, you know, everyone, you know, has cool. their own opinion. The you know, everybody sweet. can have their own opinion about it. So Under the black light. Even little things, like those beads that fell out of the announcer's table, were kind of satisfying to see. It seemed, though, this is only part of a bigger story with Uncle... Yeah, and, and once again, like I said... Some people enjoyed that match, other people didn't. Me, I was kind of indifferent to it, so. Howdy in the Firefly Funhouse, and sadly, the ending would never happen. <sighs> After the Royal Rumble, Bray Wyatt said he would target whoever won the match between Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley at mm -hmm. Elimination Chamber. Lashley won via disqualification, so that was who Bray set his sights on. Bray began taunting the Almighty, but a match between them never came. Yeah. Wyatt was pulled off TV due to him battling a real-life illness. After six months, reports came out that Bray Wyatt was recovering and would be making a return soon. Then, on August 24th, 2023, the saddest news possible would be shared. It was revealed by Triple H that Wyndham Rotunda had died. Rotunda's family later shared that the cause of death was a heart attack. The devastating news caught the SmackDown broadcast the next day to turn into a tribute to Bray Wyatt. In the comments, share your favorite Bray Wyatt moments and let's never forget the memories this legend gave us. For show, sure, man. This was a great video. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a like because this was fantastic. Y'all, you know, link to the original video will be down below as always um yeah man it's just sad and unfortunate that we didn't get a chance to see more of what he could uh, what he was going to bring to the table um it just sucks it does um but once again all we can do is cherish the moments we were able to see and witness so comment down below let me know what's your favorite version of bray wyatt do you like the wyatt family bray wyatt do you like uh maybe some of y'all like husky harris <laughs> uh d did you guys like the fiend version of bray wyatt you know um let me know or his last incarnation the wyatt six version like did y'all like that version of him which version of bray wyatt did you like the most did you find the most creative the most engaging has some of the best matches for you let me know down below but i appreciate all of them support you guys have shown on channel road 250k and i'm still here on the speedy youtube wrestling champion of the world appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace